Hello again, 8th graders. It's Mr. Crozier again. Um, so today we are moving on to a new topic within this, but it's going to kind of deal a little bit with what we talked about the other day, combining like terms. But today we're talking about the distributive property. So um, let's just get going here. The distributive property allows us to get rid of parentheses by bringing the multiplication from the outside to the inside of the parentheses. So we talked a lot about this last year. So we're going to see this kind of happening as we go. But remember from last year, the general example we have here is that if I have a number and I am multiplying into a set of parentheses by two other numbers being added or subtracted, we need to multiply this outside number times both things inside of our parentheses. So we end up with an a times b, in this case, in our general term, plus an a times c. So we're just multiplying that outside number times both things inside. So step one, we are going to, well, distribute distribute, sorry, the number on the outside of the parentheses into everything on the inside, every term on the inside. And remember, a term is anything separated by a plus or a minus. And then after we've distributed, we are going to combine any like terms that we can. So that's going to deal with what we talked about the other day. So uh, combining any of the same variable terms together by adding them or subtracting them. So let's kind of start to see this in action. If we've got two times a quantity, and that quantity is x minus three, well, we can't evaluate on the inside of parentheses using order of operations because we don't know what x is yet. So what we're going to do here is just distribute to simplify this expression. So we've got two times x to begin with here, and two times x going to be our first thing. And then we've got to multiply in times this 2 times negative 3. So um, how can I write this so it won't be too confusing? Um, well, we're going to have plus, just like from our uh, general example up above here with our no uh, letters instead of numbers, plus we've got 2 times negative 3. And 2 times x is just 2x plus, well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then we can simplify one step further here by getting rid of that plus sign because adding negatives is just subtracting. So, oopsies, to simplify this all the way, we're going to have 2x minus 6. All right, moving on along. Same deal, we've got 1 fourth times this quantity, 8 plus x. So we need to distribute this 1 fourth into both terms inside of my parentheses. So there's my 1 fourth times 8 right there to begin with, plus 1 fourth times x. And then this plus 5 was not inside of the parentheses, so I'm just going to leave him kind of all by his lonesome there. And now we're going to start whittling this down and simplifying it. So 1 fourth times 8, well, 1 fourth of 8 is just 2. Plus 1 fourth x is as good as we can get with that, and minus 5. And now we're going to do what we talked about the other day. So I'm going to start with my variable terms, and I only have one of them. So that is a plus 1 fourth x. So I'm going to start this out with a 1 fourth x. And now we have our other like terms. These are both constant terms, so they don't have a variable. We have a positive 2 and a minus 5. So 2 minus 5 will get us negative 3. So there that is simplified down. Oops, I goofed that up. So my bad there. 
let's just correct this as we have it here. So mistakes will get made, you will make them too, we gotta fix them. So the only issue I had here was that I had minus five there. I wasn't reading from up above. So this should be a plus five. And two plus five is plus seven. So my mistake there, just an example of how you guys will make mistakes too. Got to be able to try to find them and fix them like I did. I found that pretty quick and fixed it pretty quick. So just be looking out for that kind of stuff because it will get you just like it got me. But we don't give up. Keep trying. Make ourselves better at this. All right, example C now. So we just have this negative out here. But remember, that negative outside of parentheses is kind of hiding that little invisible one there with it. So what we're doing is we are taking negative one times our first term there. What the heck? So bouncing around on me, I'm sorry. So we have negative one times x and then plus a negative one times negative 10. Well, negative one times x or negative of x, the opposite of it is just negative x. And negative one times negative 10 is plus 10. So this thing simplified out here is going to be negative x plus 10. That is as good as we can get it. It can't be simplified anymore. And our final guided example here before you guys do some try on your owns is going to be this x times 11 plus 6 and then plus a 3x afterwards. So first thing we want to do is distribute that x into both terms here. So we got to take that x times 11, x times 11, and then plus this x times 6. And finally, add this 3x. Didn't get goofed up by the plus this time. Well, x times 11 is just 11x. We like to have that coefficient out front. 6 times x is just 6x, and then plus 3x. Well, we're going to simplify this down to one term because all of them are like terms. So we're going to have 11 of something plus the 6 of something give us 17 x's. And then plus this 3 x out here, well 17 of something plus 3 of something is going to end us up with 20 x. And that's as good as we can get that until we know what x is and then we can multiply it. But we don't, so this is as good as we can do. All right, so just like before, um, teach in the room, be ready to kind of pause, give them time to give it a try, and then you can hit play and go with me as we go so we can see how you guys did on this. All right, so go ahead and pause, and then we can get going from there. So our thing we have to do here, we have parentheses with stuff being added inside, so we have to distribute this negative 8 into both terms. We're going to have negative 8 times our 2x there, plus this negative 8 times our 10, and now we can start to whittle it down. So negative 8 times 2 of something will give us, well, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 of those x's. And negative 8 times 10 is going to give us negative 80. And we want to get rid of that plus sign because adding negatives is just subtracting. So negative 16x minus 80. Moving on along, number 2, pause it give it a try, then you can hit play and see how you did. So we're distributing this half into here now. So one half times negative four x, whoops, one half times negative four x. Distribute that half into our eight, so plus one half times eight. Gotta multiply both of these things out. 
half of negative 4 is going to give us negative 2. So we have negative 2 x's there. Plus, and 1 half of 8, or 1 half times 8, is going to give us 4. Nothing further to do. We just want to be sure we're keeping track of those negatives because that will make all the difference here. All right, number three, pause, give it a try, then we can hit play again. So I know I had that one out there from our examples above, but I'm going to show you just distributing in this negative. So we're taking the opposite of x, and that's just going to give us negative x. Then we're multiplying this negative into 5, so that's the opposite of 5, which will be a minus 5. And then we have that x there. All right, we've got like terms going on here, so we need to combine them. So we're going to start with our negative x and our positive x. Pardon me, I'm sorry. And negative 1 of something plus another of something is going to make that go away. So that's going to give us 0 x's. And then our only lonely constant term here is going to be that minus 5. So we're going to have minus 5. Now 0 times anything is going to make it disappear because that's going to be equal to 0. So if we make that 0x go away, our simplified expression here will be just negative 5. And finally, number 4 here, pause, give it a try, hit play, and see how we did. So I'm going to be distributing this negative 3 into my parentheses. I've got negative 3 times negative x. And then plus, we've got a negative 3 here times that negative 4. And we have our 12x left all alone out there because it was not inside of parentheses, so we just leave it. Negative 3 times negative x. A negative times a negative gives a positive, so that is just 3x. Plus, well... Negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12, so we're just going to be adding 12 to that. And then we can't forget about our 12x that was outside of the parentheses there. So once again, we've got some like terms. Got our variable term, x. So we've got 3x's and 12x's. When I add those together, that's going to give us 15x. And then just like the last problem, I've got that lonely constant term out there, that plus 12. So we're just going to leave it be here and add 12. All right, so keep in mind, if you did not do these examples correctly, be sure you're following along with what gets written here so you can keep track of how the correct way to go about these things is. Um, and you're going to get your independent practice to... Give that a try with distributing and combining like terms here. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you later.